Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm glad to see you again. Uh, we're going to be working on the mat today, same as usual, making sure that nothing is uh, bringing pain to the joints. Um, muscular discomfort is okay um, as far as you're happy with it. Um, so taking a rest whenever you need the rest, making sure that you're picking the option that works for you best. I'm going to give you a couple of different options, obviously obviously as we add on the movement it starts becoming harder so always to choose the option that suits you better dropping back to the previous option if you feel that you're straining um progressing if you feel that you're maybe underestimating yourself a little bit too much so we're going to start off lying down on the front we're trying to work on shoulder mobility i'm going to <coughs> set myself comfortably on the belly same as usual, if I know that um, this position is very painful for the back, my upper back, my lower back tends to hyperextend, it tends to arch quite a lot, then I might just roll a towel or a little mat and then pop it under the belly to encourage the lumbar spine to go into a slight flexion and lengthen away. So nothing is pressing and compressing down there. It feels open, it feels relaxed. I'm going to set the arms by the side of the head, the elbows are bent. So if you do a 90 degree angle at the elbow joint, the elbows are reaching off to the side, so the arms are in a nice square position. I'm going to drop the head to the middle, tucking the chin in, the forehead is on the floor, and then I'm just going to start with a little single arm lift. So I'm just going to pick up my right arm, I'm going to let it hover, and then I'm just going to drop it back down. I'm going to pick up the other arm, let it hover, and then let it come down. So I'm just going to load the weight of the arm into the shoulder socket. As you're keeping the little lift going, think of the smallest lift you possibly can. So don't exaggerate it because that's when compensation tends to kick in. And then on the little lift, just notice where you're lifting from. You might find that you are one of those people that, that tends to pull the arm in when it lifts up. That's normally stand at the back of the shoulder it's not very strong it's not supporting very well so you need to pull the arm in to lift it up so if you can think of the elbows are staying wide as if you were holding a square box between your arms so you're just running the arm up the side of the box and then down up the side of the box and then down the back is not moving the head is staying on the floor See if you can be aware of the tension right at the back of the shoulder, right behind the shoulder blade, not into the neck, not down into the lower back. So see if I can try and find that lift that allows those muscles to switch on. Making sure that the movement is not causing pain. And then I'm happy here, I feel comfortable here, I'm going to stay here. If I feel that I can progress with the movement, then I'm going to try and see if I can play with the internal external rotation. So I'm going to lift the arm, I'm going to hold the lift, I'm going to try and keep the hand nice and high, and then I'm just going to tip the elbow down. Then I'm going to bring it back to level and then drop. And the other arm the same. So I'm going to lift it up, I'm going to keep my hand there, I'm going to tip the elbow down, lift it back to level, and then drop it to the ground. If there is tightness across the front of the chest, or if there is any issue with the rotator cuffs, you, will, you might find that that is impossible. I can't drop the elbow and keep my hand off the ground. My hand will drop down first as the arm is slightly internally rotated. Remember, think of a smaller lift and then think of your elbow reaching out of the shoulder socket. So see if I can try and encourage that slight external rotation. So see if I can encourage that slight opening through the chest and a little bit more fine tuning of the rotator calves deep into the shoulder joint if i feel that the uh, the little dip on the elbow is just too much i can't do it is making my shoulder strain is causing me pain then i'm not going to dip i'm just going to lift the arm trying to keep it level to the floor and then i'm going to pop it back i'm going to lift tip if I can and then lower back, lift, tip if I can and then back down, three, neck is relaxed, making sure that the jaw is relaxed, two, shoulders are still wide, last one and 
releasing back. Giving the shoulders a good roll, relaxing the shoulders and the upper back. I'm going to push up onto hands and knees. And then I'm just going to give the middle of the back, the back of the shoulder, a little stretch. Sending the ribcage up and towards the ceiling. I'm going to lift up into cat. And then I'm going to ease my way down. Lifting up into cat. And then ease my way down. So maintaining that lifting and lowering down. See if I can create space between the shoulder blades across the middle of the back and then also along the back of the rib cage, right along the spine. If there is any reason I can't stay up on my hands and knees, I'm going to come down into sitting and I'll just be stretching from a seated position. I can still get the same traction behind the shoulders and in the middle of the back without the pressure on the knees or the wrist. Two. Last one. And releasing back, releasing the shoulders, releasing the upper back. It's a little bit more movement into the shoulder and in a way a little bit more opening across the front of the chest. I want to try and open up a little bit more. So I'm just going to reach the hands behind, play with the position of the hand. Ideally, if I turn my fingers to point to the back of the room, that again externally rotate the arms and then encourage more opening into the shoulder. Physically, I might not be able to do so. My wrist won't let me, uh, my shoulder won't let me. So I'm just going to start in a comfortable position, maybe with the fingers pointing to the side or coming up onto an open fist if you rather. And then retracting the shoulders, I'm going to try and squeeze the shoulder blades together and then exaggerating, I'm just going to push my chest forward as if I was trying to stick my chest forward and up, encouraging a nice opening across the front of the chest. Then I'm going to ease my way back and then try and again. See if you can wind the arms out a little bit more. So see if I can try and turn the fingers a little bit more towards the back of the room, just a few degrees. And then I'm going to try again. I'm going to retract the shoulders and then pushing forward through the top of the chest to see if I can encourage that opening across the front. And then I'm just going to ease my way back. And again, if possible, I might turn the hands even further until eventually, if possible, the fingers will be pointing to the back of the room as I extend up with this thing there. But just make sure that what you're aware of is still the opening happening across the front of the chest. As I can point my finger, everybody can point the fingers to the back of the room, but if my chest is tight, that will limit my range of movement. So I won't be able to open and lift anymore. So making sure that I'm still able to exaggerate that movement and create that lift. And then whichever position your hands are on, if you want to make it a little bit more challenging, instead of keeping them so wide apart, See if you can gradually start bringing them a little bit closer together. The closer the hands, again, the more tension across the front of the chest, the stronger the stretch becomes across the front of the chest. So I'm going to go just as far, just as deep as I can deal with that stretch. Just no pain, no discomfort. Three. Two. Last one, and releasing back. Giving the shoulders a little bit of a roll. I feel a little bit more movement into the upper back. There's a little bit more space at the front of the chest. I'm going to try and see if I can get the legs involved. I'm going to bend the knees and then bring the feet a little bit closer to the hips. If you need a little support, you're going to lean back onto the hands. This time, comfortable position so that I can hold myself here without a any effort or without much effort anyway if i want to make it a little bit harder i'm not going to support myself i'm just going to keep the hands off the ground and then i'm going to start with a little internal external rotation in the hip so i'm going to turn one thigh in the other one out then come back one thigh in the other one out and then back mind you will start to travel forward as the tendencies to shuffle forward so you might have to adjust and then move back again play with the position of the feet if the feet are too close to the body it makes it really hard to go over so it makes me work really 
hard to keep my balance and then go over. If my feet are too far away, the angle of the knee is quite wide, so it makes it easier, but that creates quite a lot of pressure into the knee and into the hip too. So see if I can get into that maybe 90 degrees, a little bit less than 90 degrees angle, that is going to allow a good movement from side to side. Notice the difference between the right and the left hip. One side feels really loose, one side feels a little bit stiffer. On my right side, when the leg internally rotates, my right bottom cheek tends to lift off the ground. The hip feels much tighter. On the left side, my left seat bone is down on the ground and then the leg is touching the floor. So notice the difference between the right and the left leg. There shouldn't be pain in the hip, there shouldn't be pain in the knee. We're just trying to warm up the hip joint. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And release them back. Hips feel a little bit looser, hopefully. Back feels a little bit looser too. I'm going to try and see if I can get a little bit of a load through. So lowering yourself all the way down until you're resting. On the back, I'm going to bend the knees and walking the feet up and towards the hips. Connecting to the centre, I'm going to lift the right leg up into tabletop. And then lifting that left leg too. If you find the tabletop is too much, my back is straining straight away, too heavy, I can't do that. I might cheat, I might bring the knees a little bit closer to the chest, so the legs are much easier to hold in this position as they're resting on top of the body. If I find that this is still is too heavy for me, it's too much, I'm just going to build a little wedge under the hips, under the bum. So I'm just going to wedge the, the mat or towel, a little pillow, just to keep the bum slightly raised so that I can maintain the legs in this position without strain. Then I'm going to bring the feet nice and close together and then keeping the feet together, I'm going to start externally rotating. So I'm going to turn the knees out and then bring them back together. I'm going to turn them out and then bring them back together. Think of the movement, the same as you did when you were seated, is that external rotation that I'm looking into. So it doesn't matter if the movement feels really small. I don't want any catching into the side of the hip, so I don't want any pain there. But at the same time, I want a strong connection through the centre to help me support to the weight of the leg. And then a little bit more movement, a little bit more work through the hip joint, uh, externally and internally rotate the leg. The feet are staying together, heels of the feet, possibly balls of the feet if you want to. Let's see if I can try and loosen up the hip a little bit more. Five, four, three, two, one, and release them back. Returning the legs are down, taking the wedge off the hips if you're slightly raised, relaxing through the legs, relaxing through the hips. And then I'm just going to try and focus on the upper body. So keeping the knees bent, the feet are staying on the floor. I'm going to reach the hands to the back of the head, tilting the chin to the chest. I'm going to start curling the head away from the ground. Think of the back of the neck lengthening, not tightening, tensing and compressing, but lengthening away. The weight of the head sits on the hands and the arms are just carrying the head. They're not pulling it. Think of the pull coming from the front of the belly. The top of the belly pulling on the rib cage, trying to slide it down into towards the hips. And then I'm just going to ease my way back down again. Then again, I'm going to try and slide the rib cage towards the hips, lengthening through the back of the neck, creating that lift, trying to look straight forward, trying to look straight into the legs, into the gap between the legs, between the inner thighs. And then I'm just going to ease my way back down again. So maintaining that movement going. Noticing if you're over recruiting through the neck, so does the neck feel so stiff that the, the muscles of the front of the neck feel kind of like locked and tight. Can I try and 
keep it active they're supporting the weight of their head partially but can i try and keep it loose so can i kind of like look around when my head and my shoulders are curling away from the ground and then easing back so i'm happy with the movement i'm just going to stay with that movement if i feel that i can progress it then every time that i lift i'm going to hold it so i'm going to tilt the chin lift the head lift the shoulders i'm going to stay here for five four three two one and then i'm just going to ease back that felt is still easy so on the next one i'm going to tilt the chin lift the head lift the shoulders if i can i'm going to stay up if that first the hold felt easy then this time i might try and stay there for 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and then i'm going to ease my way back down we're going to try a few more times if you're doing the long hold maybe two more times up if you're doing the middle hold maybe three if you're doing the up and down maybe going up and down five six times having a rest in between each lift if you need to so i can feel the tension at the top of the belly i can feel the abdominals are fatiguing now i can feel that my legs maybe start pulling a little bit to help my bum is clenching and curling see if you can think of the effort to stay on the belly the neck is still relaxed releasing all the way down allowing the head to rest on the mat to give it a little roll making sure that the neck doesn't feel stiff it doesn't feel tight and then i'm going to go back to the other end i'm going to go back to the legs this time i'm going to try and change the direction of the movement instead of moving in and out i'm going to move forward and back so same as before i'm going to lift that left leg up into tabletop and then picking up the right leg exactly the same as before i can't hold both legs off the ground i'm going to pull them towards me this is good i can do this i'm going to stay here i feel that no i need a little bit more support i'm just going to roll the mat to slightly wedge it under the hips the bum is not the tailbone is now curled up in the air the mat is holding me into that slight flexed position and then from there think of the opposite corner of the room and between the wall and the ceiling i'm going to try and send the foot to that way one at a time i'm going to extend my right leg you see with the big toe i can try and touch that corner then i'm going to come back and then with the left i'm going to do the same and then come back with the right i'm going to repeat come back and then with the left i'm going to repeat again so keeping the leg high so it's about 45 degrees angle between the leg and the floor or maybe a little bit more a little bit higher so as the leg extends and notice the hips the tendency if there is not stability into the pelvis you see that kind of like rocking forward and back so you you can see the people almost like a sliding forward and back down the mat the hips are not holding stable and then my back is kind of like extending and flexing every time that the leg moves so if i can try and think of holding the back nice and still the hips are nice and still and just move the leg into the hip socket i can feel the front of the hip i can feel the belly working there is absolutely nothing into the back i'm going to ease the leg and then i'm going to try with the other side if i feel that this movement is quite easy so i can keep doing this for a little while no problem i might try and make it a little bit harder so instead of extending one i'm going to go for both legs I still want that strong tension at the front of the belly i'm still aiming for the top corner of the room and then i'm going to come back double the load as both legs extend out so it's more likely that the body wants to kind of like arch to follow the legs try not to let that happen so see if i can maintain my neutral alignment if i'm working from that tabletop position see if i can maintain my curled position my imprint if i'm working from the cheat position five four three two
one, and release them back. Returning one, releasing the other leg, extending the legs away, extending the arms away, stretching down the front of the body, relaxing the hips, the belly, the front of the body, the back of the body, the same. I'm going to try and see if I can put all the three movements together. So I'm going to try and turn into the little prince frog. So bending the knees, walking the feet up and towards you, resetting the same position one more time. I'm going to lift one, lift the other leg. I'm going to get the heels of the feet together and then I'm going to open the knees out nice and wide. So I'm back into the first position, first movement. From there, if I can, I'm going to reach the hands behind the head and then lifting the head and the shoulders, I'm going to put tension to the top of the belly too. I'm going to stay up. I'm going to take a deep breath in as I breathe out. I'm going to extend my legs. I so say, imagine a frog trying to jump. So I'm going to extend the legs up to the top corner and then I'm going to pull them back. I'm going to extend and pull back. Extend and pull back. If the head starts becoming too heavy so I can feel that my neck is fatiguing or the belly is fatiguing, I can always pop it down and then see if I can keep the movement to going through the legs. Play with the position of the leg. If I can keep the external rotation, so if I can keep the, my thighs turned out with my knees, my toes are pointing to the side, that makes it a little bit harder. If I keep them forward, that makes it a little bit easier. So see if I can encourage that opening. As I extend, imagine the back of your calf touching, not the inside of them, but the back of the calf, the back of the legs touching, and then I'm going to pull back. So feeling that strong tension at the top, at the bottom of the belly, that stronger connection through the hip, that work into the inner thigh, and side of the hip, five, four, three, Last one, and release them back. You're dropping the legs down, extending the legs away, allowing the belly to lengthen, the hips are to open up, the front of the body to stretch out. Five, four, three, two, one, and release them back. Bring the arms back by the side when you're ready. Reaching forward into the arms, tilting the chin to the chest, lifting the head, lifting the shoulders, strong through the center, all the way back up to the top. Using the arms to help, using the arms, using um, rolling over onto the side and pushing to come up if you need to. As you get to the top, <laughs> I can feel a little bit more connection at the front of the hips, the front of the body through the inner thighs. I'm going to retest my internal and external rotation seated and then see if I can balance a little bit better on the seat bench. So this time see if you can take the hands off the ground if you haven't done it already and then see if you can get the little internal external rotation going. It doesn't matter if the hips lift slightly, just don't force the leg. So it doesn't matter if the movement is only small, see if you can be aware of the tension at the front of the abdomen working to hold you up so it doesn't feel as if you're going to roll and fall backwards. The tension at the front of the hip and then the work into the hip joint to internally and externally rotate the leg. Four, three, two, last one, and release and back. Releasing the hips, releasing the legs, they're finding a comfortable seated position. And then raising the arms up to the front. Same as you did at the beginning in the warm up, I was trying to create that external rotation into the shoulder, the opening through the chest. I'm going to set the arms in the same position, but this time I'm going to stay upright. And then maintaining the fingers pointing up to the ceiling, I'm going to start pushing the forearms to the back of the room. If the wall was behind me, I would want my hands 
to touch the wall before my elbows. So see if you can think of the angle of the forearm. Can I keep the forearm nice and upright? So I'm going to open and close. Five, four, three, no forcing, two, no shragging, last one, and releasing back. Releasing the shoulders, releasing the back. I hope you've enjoyed the session. You can link it to another one as it's only a short one, or if you're happy with this, well done. I hope I'll we'll see you all soon. Please subscribe to the channel, mention it to other people, and uh, if you want to know something a little bit more in depth, we've also got the um, on-demand um, membership uh, with uh, My Pilates Life. So find us at Sussex Physiotherapy and subscribe there. Uh, all the information down onto the, into the description box. See you soon. Bye for now.